Now, it's been more than a day since that humiliating loss to India at the T20 Cricket World Cup, but the din and the noise in Pakistan and around the world that def are after the defeat is still ringing loud. Now, look, losses are a part of sport. But the way Pakistan choked, first against USA and then against India, has enraged a whole nation. Social media platforms were on fire with caustic remarks that former Pakistan cricketers, fans and now even the management have made. Some of them screaming through the screens. Pakistan legend Wasim Akram, in fact, summing up this utter disappointment in one word. He says, embarrassment. His teammate during the glory years of Pakistan, Waqar Yunus, he's come out calling this a horrible performance. Former Pakistani selector Mohammad Wasim criticized the politics around this. He said it, they've taken reserves because of infighting and pulling the sport down. Ramiz Raja, another former cricketer, was more insulting. He said India did Park a favor by playing poorly. And he puts Babar Azam's team under the spotlight, saying they froze under pressure. Now, after all this, the PCB has finally stepped into this to find, say that a major surgery is indeed required. Now, let those words sink in, especially that of Wakar and Akram, players who took Pakistan to a World Cup final in 1999. Akram was even part of that historic 1992 World Cup win. Bottom line, what they're all saying is that this team has been a disgrace, a shadow of what Pakistan has achieved and what they stood for in cricket. And the PCB chief finally putting the cherry on the cake, or should we say the criticisms, and asking for operation to be conducted. Now, hold on, I'm confused. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did that not happen right after that horrible below-par performance at the ODI World Cup last year? Starting with the team captain, Barbara Azam, who was forced to step down. The coach, Mickey Arthur, and his entire staff sacked. The chiefs of selection, Inzamam ul Haq, fired. Mohamed Hafiz then was temporarily brought on board as team director and after some months, he too was removed. If this was not a major operation, a cleanse of the system if you want to call it so, then what was it? There was a completely different set of people put in place. Even the PCB chief was changed. Zaka Ashraf back then made way for to Mohsim Nakvi. All these dr drastic changes were made knowing there was another World Cup coming in just nine months. So I'm sorry to be the messenger here bearing bad news, but the management needs to sit up, take stock and notice what is happening in the cricket setup of a country that at one time boasted of some of the greatest in the world. They were known to be a group of champion cricketers with a vision, with intent and a spirit to fight. No one was more angry and seething than Wasim Akram. And he said more. I have a request for the chairman of PCB. Take a bold step. Forget about who is angry for not getting captaincy. You are working for the country. Stop these things. There are players who don't want to talk to each other. This is international cricket, and you play for your country. Make these players sit at home. Hard-hitting words from someone who obviously is hurting. He says they should be made to sit at home. The players should go back home, says Akram. And you can sense so much in those words, from anger to anguish. The same Akram who went and met this bunch ahead of their campaign opener against USA, all smiles, wishing them well, is livid now and is letting it all out. Not just the hurt that he's feeling, but also the truth that many are not openly talking about. The truth that is plaguing Pakistan, among many other things, that's preventing them from playing as one team. He refers to infighting, to camps within the squad, fighting over captaincy, egos clashing, all about the I instead of the we. It doesn't take a genius to figure who all Akram is blaming for a campaign that's threatening to fall apart once more. Now, we know how passionate and bold Pakistan fans are. They are the first to praise and the first to criticize as well. And this recent loss to India meant they didn't hold back. all heard of a nation united in happiness and grief, but a nation saying the same words after a sporting setback. You can only see that in Pakistan. And I understand the anger. Pakistan last won a T20 World Cup 15 years ago in 2009. 
Their only ODI World Cup win, like we mentioned, came in 1992. This is decades of being hopeful, showing up to cheer the team on, continuing to support the men in green and only being handed out one disappointment after another. Their best ever performance in T20 World Cup since 2009 was, of course, the last edition's appearance in the final, a final that they lost to England. And against India, it's always been a one-sided affair. The biggest rivalry in cricket on the world stage has always been in India's favour. Pakistan's last ICC victory came in 2017, where they won the Champions League, tro where the Champions Trophy. Their Test cricket is in shambles. Their ODI team, clueless, and let's not get to the T20 setup. I think we've said enough. It feels like the side has been in transition mode for over a decade now. All is not lost yet. There is, of course, some hope of qualifying, but it's all about permutations and combinations, and it depends on the other teams too. The odds are indeed stacked up high against Pakistan. Either way, the call from all concerned is to rejig the setup, make bold changes, and try to rectify a system where there's a rot that seems to be running deep. If not now, at least in time for the Champions Trophy set to take place in Pakistan next year. A host country stumbling at its own event? That just won't do. A first-of-a-kind sports show that's played on a different turf. A first-of-a-kind sports show that will always come up with a winner. Are you looking for perspectives that go beyond the scoreline? Hi, I'm Rupa Ramani and catch a 360-degree view of the sporting world with me here on First Post in our special First Sports. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.